Welcome to Brand Talk, another way to talk. We're going to talk about business. We talk about brands that are in the news, your brand. We talk about brands that you use and you love every day. We have a different point of view. There's no yelling. There's no screaming. Just good old conversation. Welcome to Brand Talk, another way to talk with your host, Dr. John Tantillo. And now here is the host of Brand Talk, John Tantillo. Well, welcome everybody to another wonderful session of Brand Talk. And today we have a very special guest. And I, you say, well, John, you always say that. But this is a really special guest. And I know it's special <laughs> because when I posted on Instagram that this lovely man and talented man was going to be on... I got a reading which said that this was the most number of people who saw or who liked your post. And who was it but the incomparable Don Most? And so let me introduce my friend. I hope he lets me uh, allow <laughs> me to say this. Don Most. Don, mm -hmm. welcome to Brand Talk. Uh, uh, thank you. Thanks so much for having me, John. It's good to be with you. It's been a while since uh, we saw each other in, at the Metropolitan. Uh, yes, uh, that's true. And Bernie, and, and I got to fess something up to you. When you were on Happy Days and doing Happy Days, and that's, I, I, I don't think I'm uh, telling uh, tales out of school, uh, I mean, that's what you are known for. I mean, right. you know, that's your the, talk about a brand. That's your brand. I never watched Happy Days. And the reason I didn't watch Happy Days is I was in graduate school and I was busy studying. Oh, oh and okay. I never saw I, I you know, it used to be on uh, my 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 roommates would watch it. And they love, I mean, they loved it. I mean, and they loved you. They, they love your character. Oh, cool. Um, and, and so I really didn't know you. And my friend, our, our mutual friend, Bernie, uh, said, you got to listen to this guy. This guy can really, has a, he's really got a, a great music. He's a great musical talent. And I heard you do your act. And I, 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 it's a man crush. I mean, <laughs> you got, it was simply wonderful. So oh, my you. experience of you was as a, as a, as, as an artist was as a musician. Ah, okay. And it great. wasn't as an actor. And, and uh, so go ahead. So I'll, uh, I'll let you respond to that. Oh, ah, that, well, that's, that's interesting. Oh, I, that's great to hear because, you know, uh, so many people, as you uh, alluded to, know me uh, primarily uh, from Happy Days. Um, but, you know, that was obviously it was uh, a big, big, huge hit and wonderful, wonderful experience. But in my mind, that was, you know, one character, one sort of job. Sure. And, and it's and it's not, you know, it wasn't even the character wasn't even really who I was. Um, but that to me is what acting is about and I was playing somebody pretty different than myself um, and then you you know you want to have a career beyond that so um, for a while you know it was I was fighting that and people have a preconception of who I might be because of that character so in this case you didn't have that which is which is interesting you know well, well you know you know what I remember how when I first met you and we were in the dressing room <laughs> <laughs> you know, and yeah. Bernie, Bernie is very, very protective of uh, talent. Uh -huh. And you and I, 
<laughs> we just had this instant conversation. You were telling me about a guy that you knew in LA that because I had the hat on and okay, whiz, you, uh, you two got to meet each other. You're so much like each other, and, and you know it's getting closer to showtime. And Bernie is is like saying, John, calm it down a little bit. <laughs> but I'm having we're having a great time. Right, it's, it's just going so beautifully. And it, you know, and I, I got to also be honest, I'm um, a little starstruck when I see somebody um, like if I would have uh, watched uh, as a kid uh, when I was a graduate student, Happy Days, it probably would have been I wouldn't have let you go. <laughs> but it, it, it would have been uh, somewhat yeah. embarrassing. But this just was a free flowing Oh, right. It was yeah, good. yeah, it, it was, was just wonderful. Yeah, you, you didn't have all that other stuff that people so 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 sometimes I actually might even prefer when people said, Oh, you know, I didn't really know you from the show, or I didn't used to watch the show. You know, to me, I mean, obviously it's great that I, there were a lot of fans, but when I meet people who don't didn't have that, then I feel like they have more of a I don't know, an open mind or something. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> well, well, uh, let me tell I I love music. And, you know, uh, I, I was a choir boy on so many levels. I, I used to sing in the choir and I never had the um, the confidence. Uh, I, I did have the pipes. I mean, uh, a lot of my teachers would ask me, would you like to do a solo? Uh -huh. And I would say no because I didn't really have it. And in our family, in, in my, you know, my mother was this bigger than life character and she really didn't foster the talent thing or the, you know, performer thing. Let me, let me, let, right. she, cause she did reinforce me going to graduate school and getting the PhD uh, that, that she did. But what it was is it wasn't this idea of, um, of reinforcing being a performer. Sure. And, uh, sure. and, and, and uh, but that wasn't your situation. Your parents kind of, uh, uh, did, do you find, or that was your, how did you get to realizing yeah, um, that you were a performer or at least yeah. acting wise? Well, it started for me. Um, I mean, my parents were supportive, but they weren't, um, it wasn't like they initiated it in any way whatsoever. Um, it was really, I was pretty young. I saw the movie, uh, the Jolson story when I was nine years old. Yes. I and, remember that. Yeah. And, I, and it had a huge impact on me. Um, I wound up watching it. It was on million dollar movie in New oh, York. Oh yes. Million dollar movie. I love that. Yes. So, uh, so, you know, it was on twice a night, Monday through Friday and four times Saturday and four times Sunday, the one movie they would pick for the week. So I watched it on a, I missed it Monday night. Somebody school said, Oh, did you see the Jolson story on million? So I watched it Tuesday night and it like, you know, just, I was so taken by Jolson, by his talent, his, you know, the voice and, and the way they did the movie. And I watched it. I think every, the rest of the showings that week, I think I watched it 13 more times or 12 times that week. And I went out and got albums and then I started listening to William B. Williams on WNEW. He was sure. a great DJ on, they played all the great standards and the American songbook. And, and so I would listen to that and get a real education of this kind of music. And I just was loving it. And my mom, she, she grew up and was a teenager, you know, in the forties. So had a lot of the swing band, the big band albums. So I'd been exposed to that and, but I just loved that music. And then by the time I was 13, they knew I really wanted to pursue it. And they found a school in Manhattan um, run by a guy named Charlie Lowe, who was a old vaudevillian who ran a studio with his wife for young, for kids and teenagers for singing and acting and dancing. So I started going to that school and uh, that's how it all started. And then I got picked um, to be, in the he he put together like a, a nightclub act of seven or eight of his students that he would handpick 
Uh, we were like ages 14 to 16. And then I got picked to be in it. And I performed in the Catskill Mountains that one summer when I was 14, 15 years old. I love it. And all of the hotels, you know, every single one except the Concord. We couldn't break into the Concord. But so I, I was singing in this act, you know, when I was 15 before I really got into acting in a serious way. So um, that's how it all started. But then I shifted gears after that summer and got enrolled in a, a much more a serious acting class and then really got caught, you know, focused, laser focused on that. But always knew I'd want to go back to have the singing back, go back to it at some point. Right, but, right. you know, when, when say, when Happy Days hit in, the, you know, 74, 75, 76, um, that kind of music was looked upon kind of as passe. It was like it was sure. your grand, like, you know, because that this was the whole renaissance of rock and roll that was going on, what we call classic rock now. And um, so this kind of music was looked upon as my, your parents or grandparents' music. But uh, luckily, you know, it came back into favor, had a real resurgence um, starting in the mid 80s, 90s, and it's continued. So I, I about six years ago, I said, if I'm ever going to go back and do that music that I've loved, that I started out doing, I'd better do it now, you know. And that's when I put together an act, so to speak, and started playing in clubs in L.A. and New York and doing a CD and, and you know, but still still acting of course but just adding this to the equation yeah well uh i i have to say when don comes when don most comes to a city near you to do his musical show run oh, don't walk you. to it you will come out so happy Oh, and you. no, I mean, and I'm, I'm just not saying that. I really, I really uh, uh, mean it. And, well, I appreciate um, that. So I uh, it, it was really, really great. Um, uh, and yeah, can, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you know what? Because you know, it's it was it's so in my sort of you know in my blood, I guess. And I love and I love it so much. And and I guess the fact that I'm able to do it now, I don't know. I'm it's. It's it's like this extra blessing, you know, and yeah, and 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 you know that I've gotten to work with some great great musicians and the music. Um, when I get up there and and you know the arrangements are so good and the, the musicians are really great, it's such a high to me, and and the, and I've gotten better and better because, you know, I'm I think the technology has helped me a lot. Because I didn't have my own band when I was younger, so where you could just rehearse, you know, and rehearse. Um, you know, I was at the mercy. I'd have to hire a pianist to rehearse, or I don't know what, you know. But now, once I started doing this, you know, with this computer and you've got GarageBand and um, my microphone, I could I could play around to my heart's content, you know, and just record and try things, experiment. And so it's really upped the game for me and then doing it at, and then doing it at these clubs. And I, people just tell, tell me, you know, you're just getting better and better and better. So um, I have the, uh, the, that to thank for, you know, uh, to thank for the, the ability to, to improve that much. I couldn't have done this, you know, 25 years ago, <laughs> you know, I couldn't have done it. Right. Right. Or it would have been different. I would have had to do it differently, yeah. obviously. Now, now, maybe what you could do is help uh, me and our listeners to how you uh, got the part uh, on Happy Days and this yeah. whole thing of you going to Lehigh University, not Sorry. completing the degree, uh, right. wanting to be a... Um, um, a scientist, an engineer. Well, uh, not really. I wasn't really uh, wanting to be. <laughs> what's that? What's that? I wasn't really wanting to be. That was. I'll. I'll tell. I'll explain all that. But that was sort of the. That Good. was the backup plan. You know. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Sure. Well, you know, you had to do that. Our parents <laughs> didn't want us to be starving artists. Exactly. Right. right? I mean, exactly. you know, have a backup plan. You know. But go ahead. 
Yeah, well, that's exactly it. Um, well, so, okay, so then I started, you know, after that summer of singing in the Catskills, um, I went to this acting class and then I, I met a woman who was a manager and um, I was introduced to her by the woman who ran the acting class. And then she wanted to represent me, uh, heard good things about me from the teacher. And um, so I started, you know, making the rounds to the agents and, and then auditions. And I started getting, uh, after a while, I started getting uh, commercial work because in New York, then there wasn't a lot of TV being shot or films. Um, right. It was mainly Broadway soap operas and commercials. Right. And, um, and because with the red hair, they said, Oh, you know, they thought it would be an easier sell for me to do commercials. So, um, so I did, and I started doing pretty well and getting a lot of them, national commercials came close on some Broadway shows came really close. But then what happened was, um, so it started in high school and then, my parents didn't want me to just pursue acting after high school. So, you know, what, where you, you need to go and have a, get a degree, you know, in college. And um, I was good in math and science. My grandfather was a engineer. My two uncles were engineers. My cousin was becoming an engineer. So that was, I wasn't going to go to college for theater because that, then I'm still putting <laughs> my eggs in the one basket. Sure. So, so I, went to Lehigh University, which had a, was, had, was very well known for its engineering program. And, and that's, and I got in and I was majoring in, in that. Um, I lasted one semester and I realized, because since my heart wasn't in it and my head wasn't in it, I was spending more time commuting, taking the bus to Manhattan for, for these auditions you know, I would take a three hour bus ride for a 10 minute audition <laughs> and right. then have to come back. And so I, I wasn't in class as much as I should be. So I knew, I, you know, I, so I switched out of the engineering and entered their business, you know, got uh, the business department and um, to major in business. And then um, but I continued to 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 get more work, a couple little TV things in New York. And then I decided to go out to California right after my, uh, for the summer, after my junior year. Yeah, did to, you go out, excuse me, did you go out to California by yourself? Yeah, yeah, wow. and it was going to be just for the summer, so I figured this way I could make some, uh, you know, contacts and may network a little so that after I graduated the following year, maybe I'd go out to L.A. because I was doing well in commercials, but I wanted to go beyond that and and I came close on some theater, but hadn't landed anything yet. And I thought TV and film would be good. So I'd, I'd go out there for the summer and, and see what I could get going. Um, and I was able to get, because of working with different agents in New York, they said, oh, when you go to California, you should say hello to so-and-so, this agent, this agent. So I had some meetings and I was lucky I was able to had several that wanted to work with me and I signed with one of them, um, a good boutique, really good boutique agency. It was called Jack Fields and Associates. And um, they started sending me out on auditions that summer and I didn't know anybody. So what I did was I registered for summer school at UCLA. Wow. So that way I had a place to stay because I didn't know anybody there. And sure. It was a great place to hang. And, um, and then I, started going on auditions, you know, I don't know, taking buses or I don't know what I did. And then, um, and I got a couple of parts pretty quickly, some guest, guest starring roles on some TV shows. So um, after the summer, I was supposed to go back for my senior year, but the agent uh, said, you know, you've got some real momentum going and you, you could t take six months off, you, you know, you can come back to school, but Sure. We think you could do really well. You've got the seasons heating up and, and let's see what happens. And, and I said, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, you know, my parents weren't thrilled, but, you know, I said, look, six months, let's see what happens. And so I, I decide I had actually flown back to New York for my sister's wedding. And I was two days away from going back to Lehigh when this conversation ensued. And then a couple of days later, I'm on a plane back out to LA and, and, looked, found an apartment, you know, and, 
And and then I got another part, but then I had nothing for three months. And I was like, oh, I made a big mistake. And then happy days, uh, the audition. I had several, uh, I met, I had a meeting. Then I had to audition for Gary Marshall and about 10 other people in a room. And then they said they wanted me to screen test. So I had to come back again for the screen test. And that then I st- got happy days. Now, when you did the the auditions for happy days did you feel it in your bones that you got it when did you feel, <laughs> that's, when a, did that's you a that's a good one that's a great question because i'll tell you, it's a funny thing what happened um i was at the time i was i just turned 20 right so there were about seven or i don't know six other people audition screen testing for the role that i was up for um, and, and what happened was some of them were under 18 and, um, if they were under 18, under 18, they could only, they, they could only have them for a certain amount of time. Right. So, um, so I, I had to wait forever to do my scene. Uh, you know, I do, and I, I'm all, finally, I get to do the scene and it felt pretty good. I felt pretty good about it, but they said, then we're going to do improvisations next. Right. And you're going to do an improv with this. They had an actress, a young actress, and it's going to be like you're going out on your first date. But I had to wait forever because they had to go the the they had to go with the younger kids first. And she now it's finally my turn. She wasn't 18, so they had to let her go. Oh. And they said you're going to do. She had to go, so you're going to do a different one. Yeah, you know, meet Harvey Miller. He's uh, one of the comedy writers. You know, some middle aged comedy writer. And they set up some scenario for me to do. And I'm feeling like I got screwed already. And, right, and, right. and you know, I did it. But I, I don't know. I didn't feel like it was great. And I, I just felt like I was kind of ready for the other thing. Then they said, wait around, because then they're going to do this interview with you on camera. So I had to wait around. By now, I, I was like deflated. I don't know. I was feeling like, like... I, it was blown for me. This opportunity was blown somehow. So by the time I got to the interview, it was like, I almost, I don't know. It, it was probably a good thing because it was like all that, that trying to please was out of my system. And I was just, I was almost angry and there's a certain amount of power in that maybe. And sure. then I just sort of was more authentic probably than I might've been. I don't know, but whatever it was, you know, they, I got a call and my agent called me a, a few days later and said, you know, and, and they loved your, they loved your audition. They loved everything and blah, blah, blah. But um, uh, I was auditioning for the role of Potsy and um, they said, you know, we're going with Anson Williams again. Cause he had already done this. It's a long story. He and Ron Howard already done the pilot two years earlier. It right. didn't sell. And now they were making another one, but they made them screen test again because the network thought they'd be too old. So anyway, they said Anson's going to got the part, but they loved your screen test so much that they want to create a, a role for you. And there's a small part in the pilot and they want you to play that character and it's going to become a regular, you know, we'll offer you a certain amount of episodes guaranteed and da, 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 da. Um, <laughs> so that's how it happened. And then we turned it down and then we turned it down because I was up for a dramatic part, which I was much more interested in doing. I was up for a really cool, uh, TV movie, uh, uh period piece, um, world war two written by the guy who wrote summer of 42. And I really wanted to do this and I had a very good chance. So my agents and I decided to pass on happy days on that Friday night. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, I did, did not know that. that. Yeah. Yeah. Good. yeah. A lot of people don't, wouldn't know that, you know? And I so, brought it out of you. That's, yeah. see that? That's great. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, so, <laughs> so how did we get back to happy days? Um, well, my, my agent happened to play basketball every Saturday at Gary Marshall's house. And Gary was a, the creator of the show. Sure. And he directed me in the screen test. And he came, he told my agent and he said, I got to talk to you. So during a break in the basketball game, 
he says to my agent, hey, what's with your boy <laughs> turning us down? And, you know, what's going on? And 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 Gary says, you know, uh, I think this is going to go as a midseason replacement. And, and uh, we can offer him, instead of seven out of 13 episodes, we'll guarantee 10 out of 13. I love it. And then instead of $750 an episode, well, we can give him $1,000 an episode, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so my agent calls me back on Monday and says, we might want to rethink this. <laughs> you know? Yes. And, and uh, you know, and I had a lot of people telling me what, over the weekend, you, why are you crazy turning down this pilot? You know? And I said, well, maybe, you know, so anyway, we thank God we decided to take it. <laughs> right, right, right. Right. So I, 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 I just love this. What ever happened to the, the, uh, the dramatic movie? Oh, they made it. Um, but they made it. You? Um, <laughs> yeah. And they, they thought I'd be perfect uh, because the guy who was going to, who's going to play my uncle was Jack Warden. And they thought I looked like a young Jack Warden. Yes. yes. And, yeah. And they said it'd be great, but then they, they, they couldn't give me an answer because Jack was in Europe doing a film and they said, we won't know for a couple of weeks. That's right. why I had time. And then happy day said, we have to know. The funny thing is that one of the other guys that was screen testing for the role of Richie was, was the actor, Robbie Benson. And yes. Yes. so, so Robbie didn't get the part obviously, but then he wound up getting cast in that TV movie that I would have done because Jack Warden wound up doing it. Right. So I would have probably gotten cast in that. And then Robbie wound up doing it. Got it. Got it. Well, you know, uh, you, uh, uh, I hear that you and Anson, Anson, uh, a Anson, 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 Anson Williams are pretty good friends, but there was a little bit uh, of a disappointment because you wanted to at one point put, uh, the, some music in <laughs> the the show. If you can relate that story, this is a very interesting oh. and and your relationship with Gary Marshall and right. how he responded to you. Go ahead. One yeah. Well, yeah. What what happened with that was that Anson came from a theater background, a mu and he had done musical theater in L.A. and so he he sang, and um, very early on he he approached Gary Marshall in the first season. And said, I have an idea, you know, you, you're doing a show about the 50s. You've got you've got all the cars and and the outfits and the girls and the poodle skirts and this and that. But you don't have music and we could do music. We could have a band that performs at Arnold Drive in and all that. And Gary goes, oh, that's a good idea. That's an he goes, well, are you any good? Are you sing? And he goes, Anson goes, yeah, I'm pretty good. So he said, OK, we'll, we'll try it. We'll see how it goes. And. So, you know, this was unbeknownst to any of us. So Anson wound up, uh, they did an episode where he sang and it went well. And then Gary liked it and said, okay, you know, we'll have the band. And they started doing it more and more. And Anson was, was the singer. And, you know, here I'd been singing several years earlier, you know, in a nightclub act. And I'm like going, well, I'd like to, you know, bands could have more than one singer. And so I brought it up at some point, but, it didn't go anywhere. So then I, I I arranged a meeting with Gary, my manager, to come in with me and talk to Gary about it seriously, you know. And so I went in and he's behind his desk and he, and I was I was going on and on, you know, making my plea why I should be able to sing too. And 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 then it was so funny, Gary, after I finish, he just looks at me, takes a couple of beats, and he's he's like, you know. If I was putting an act together and I needed a juggler, I wouldn't need two jugglers. Oh, wow. And 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 that was it. He like just shot it down. It was like I don't need two jugglers. But, and um, but, but he was right in a, in a I hate to you know step yeah. on you, but in, in a sense he was right. But go ahead and yeah. I did it in, yeah. in a in a nice way. Go ahead, maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I now I understand. You know, maybe at the time I didn't quite yeah. agree and understand, but I, I do, you know, I, he, he was saying, you know, 
Anson, he had already established as the singer. My character was more the wise guy, comedian, you know, right. and, and he didn't want to mess with that. So, right, right. so um, yeah, he was, he was right. Um, and, and um, so, so, you know, it was tough. I got to, then every once in a while, they, they were nice. They let me in some special episodes. I got to sing a little bit in some special episodes. So it, it was fine. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, now what we do on brand talk is I like to, I like to bring this up. I like to ask, do you see yourself as a singer or a musician or do you see yourself as an actor? I've seen myself as both. I mean, to, to, right. totally as both. And I've also, and a, I've directed three independent films. Yeah, and yeah. and it looks like I is good chance I might be directing another one fairly soon. There's something really brewing on a film that a script that I wrote with my wife. Um, so so I consider myself an actor and singer and director. Right, right. Well, let me tell you something. I I've seen you recently uh, do some acting parts. Oh. And I want to tell you, I, 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 and I'm not trying to be patronizing or I'm not trying to uh, suck up to you. I think you're a really very accomplished actor. I mean, oh, you, you're you. really, really good. And the part that I saw you in was where you are talking to your best friend about giving a, giving a part of your anatomy to them. <laughs> oh, 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 the kid, the, I was going to give him. I was supposed to give him, it was my kidney. Yeah, yeah. Kidney. right. Yeah. And you really did. It was very moving. And oh. uh, I, 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 oh, I, thank I, you. I watched that. And I said, you know, this, <laughs> he's going to kill me because I see, I see more, when I think of Don most, I think of musician. I don't think of actor. Right. Oh, That's, and it it's is. so interesting That's... how you turn that around by you know you 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 did something on facebook and this is my latest my latest thing right. and i and i watched it i said well, let me see how good this guy is you know right and, and you're 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 really really good no uh, you're well, really thanks. great I, 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 good I is the enemy of great go ahead yeah I, I appreciate that so and it was frust. it was hard you know, after Happy Days, well, I, I, I left after the seventh season when the con my contract was up. The show ran four more years, but I, I felt I needed to try to make a break so I could have a career beyond just that one character. And it was hard at the sure. beginning. It was very difficult. Um, but it's been getting better and better, I guess, because I'm getting older. And um, so there's more distance between the character and myself now in time and in age. And so more and more parts, you know, have been coming my way and, and I'm getting a chance to, to play all different kinds of characters, which is what I love. And, um, and there's two films out now on, uh, that are fairly recent where very different characters. And I hope people take a look and, and you too, John, I hope, would love for you to take a look. Um, there's a film out uh, called uh, man's best friend or MBF where I, it's a, very dramatic piece. I play a defense attorney and I'm, I'm representing a, a wounded vet. And um, so I have some really good, powerful, a really powerful scene in, in the courtroom. And then um, another film called Lost Heart, which just came out on Amazon Prime, um, which is a comedy drama. Uh, it's a beautiful story. And um, I play a, a, a local a small town pastor in, in a, a little town in Northwest Michigan called Lost Heart and a very different role there. So, so if you look at that role and then you look at the one on man's best friend uh, or the one that you saw, which was called a harvest time, which was a pilot for a TV show, uh, it, which is on YouTube. Now you can look me up and put in harvest time and you'll see that at the one that you were referring to. And they're all very different. And, and that's what I love. Um, I, I feel probably more comfortable playing characters who are different than myself than if it was myself. Right. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. I could, I don't know. It just, it's easier for me. And I prefer that. Yeah. 
um, do you think as one gets older as an actor, uh, especially if you're uh, a male character or a male, um, it gets uh, a little easier in the sense that uh, being a leading man, uh, there's so much competition, but there's not so much competition as you get older or not so much. What, uh, how do you like that as, an, uh, as a, a perception? I think there is something to that. Um, there's still a lot of competition, but, but yeah, I think, um, because it's, uh, more specific to the age itself and, um, it's probably not quite as much competition that I think you're right in that regard, even though there's still plenty, it's, it's probably the field is smaller. And also the fact that, um, like I said earlier, that there's more separation from me and that character because I'm certainly in a different age bracket so that they c people can accept me more readily now than they did right, 20 right. years ago, 25 years ago when I still might have been kind of close to the character that I was playing. Now mm -hmm. I look obviously, you know, different and older and I could play the father or the grandfather or the uncle or whatever. And right. it's, it's, it's all gotten, it's opened it up for me. And and I hope it just continues because I'm loving getting to play, you know, interesting characters in 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 well written scripts, and that's what I've been wanting to do for so long. And there was a time when I was taking some parts that I wasn't thrilled about, but I just felt I got to peck away. I got to peck away and hit and and show that I can do something else. And they weren't the kinds of there wasn't the material that I loved and was passionate about, but I just you know, felt I had to do it. And now I'm finally getting scripts and, and roles where I could really sink my teeth into it. And um, I've been waiting a long time for that. So um, right. I'm very grateful and I'm hoping it just keeps escalating. When, when you first hit fame, I mean, in, in those days, you would have at least 50 million people uh, right. watching you each week. So that when you walk down the street, uh, there was no such thing as privacy. Correct. Uh, how did you how did you respond to that uh, back in the day, and how do you respond to that today when people or, or yeah. not so much? Uh, so back in the day, you're right. I mean, it's not like today where you know, besides cable, there's so many uh, options on the internet, um, platforms, streaming, and this and that, and yeah, right. hundreds and hundreds of channels. So back then it was three networks and, you know, a couple of the local channels. So yeah, we would have 50, 60 million people watching us. Now, if you have a big hit show, you know, maybe you're getting 6 million people or something like that. Six to so, 10. A, yeah. bit, a, 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 a popular show will uh, get about 10 million. Uh, okay. No more. No more. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it was very different in that regard. And, you know, at the beginning, it was a tremendous thrill, you know, I mean, it was sure. like, whoa, you, you know, all of a sudden you're being recognized and people are wanting to talk to you, get your autograph. I mean, it's like you, you, all of a sudden you're in the twilight zone, your world is, sure. in, you're in a different reality. Sure. So it's, it's thrilling and exciting and good for your ego uh, in the beginning, but but what happens is then it's not just like, okay, when you want it or once in a while, as you alluded to, it becomes all the time, 24 seven on and on and on, you know, for now it's your life. And it so it took getting you, uh, you know, takes a little bit of doing to, to adjust to that. And they don't teach classes like that when you're going to acting classes, right. um, you know, how you deal with that, that the psychologist would have, come in handy there your psychologist right it's almost like you need you need therapy you know to help you adjust to it because um sure. it's 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 unreal it's abnormal and 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 you could get sucked into some you know down this this dark tunnel if you start believing too much of that and start to, you know um losing sense of 
reality. And, 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 and I think we were all pretty lucky. We had great mentors, you know, uh, Gary Marshall and Jerry Paris, our director, um, and people who grounded us pretty well. And having a great family background helped me a lot. Right. But, but it could be dangerous. You know, you yeah. can get, so, so it was tricky. It was tricky, but luckily we, we all did pretty good. Yeah. Well, you've been with your wife a number of years. Was it, was there ever a, a, not to uh, put you on the spot by asking you this, but did it ever get in the way where you, your popularity might've gotten involved or gotten to be a little tense between uh, you know, your personal time and being with her or with oh. the girls and all of that. Uh, you know, the one thing that happened was that I, I resisted, you know, I didn't get married till I was, um, I was about 28. So I was already off the show. Ah, uh, that, that, that helped. I uh, left it. I, and I had had those years to, sort of sure. you know, be, be the bachelor in that situation. Right. Um, so that helped a lot. Uh, there, there probably were times where maybe there was a little bit of, you know, uh, creates a certain amount of tension. But for the most part, you know, um, I had gone through all that, a lot of that period and of being a bachelor and running around and all that. And, and then, um, and and Morgan, my wife, is was so wonderful and you know incredible. We've been married thirty eight years, and then we started you know when we started having kids, and we moved. You know, we didn't live. We we lived away from Hollywood. We lived right. um, you know a good forty minutes away, and it, it, you might as well have been in another state where we were. And um, so the it was the family became important, and, right. and that took precedent. And uh, and I wasn't really you know, we went running around and doing all the Hollywood things a lot. Right. You know, you are, I, I just listening to you, you're such a mensch. You're, oh, such, a good, you're such a good guy. And I can't underscore what a talent you are musically uh, oh. as well. I mean, you, oh. you know, I'm going to say this once I'll say it a thousand times. When you go to see a Don most show, you come out and your toe is tapping during the show, yeah. and afterward there's like a little skip to it, you know. And because oh, that great. music does that, it does it yeah. for me. That American Songbook, and uh, you know anything by Cole Porter, uh, and yeah. Frank Sinatra oh, can uh, you know get me all going. of that. Rogers and Hart, and, oh, and yes, and on yeah. and on, and yeah, um, yeah. I mean the music, the music was so. That's why their standards, you know, and they're, they're still going. They're, they're, they're just so wonderful. And I was always a very big stickler for, you know, uh, arrangements, having the arrangements a certain way. I recognized that very young, how important that was. And all of my favorites, whether it had been Sinatra, who had Nelson Riddle and Billy May, oh. and, and, and then Bobby Darren, who had also worked with Billy May, but Richard West was his the guy who arranged a lot of his early stuff like Mac the knife. And, you know, I, so I was a real into jazz and into the arrangers and, and, and picking out the songs and the order and, you know, cause it gets me high and, and it's so infectious, that kind of music, it's just so infectious. Yeah, exactly. And when it's done, you know, when the arrangements are good and the musicians are great and then hopefully I'm on, you know, for me, I feel like I get on the wave and go with them and um, when the voice is really there, oh man, I, it just takes over. Just oh, takes over. Yeah, I know. Well, I, 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 I can relate to what you said because for my 50th birthday party, uh, I was fortunate enough to sing with my dear friend Carrie Hoffman, who does, uh, who interprets uh, Frank Sinatra's music. Oh, okay. I sang with an 11 piece orchestra. I've got you under, under my skin, skin, which is my favorite. He and I did a duet. Oh, how wonderful. It was, I'm telling you now, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm not as good as you are. I, I, I can keep a note. I can keep, I, I you could, you could sing. Was, I can sing. Yeah. But I'm telling you, 
that was a high, it. right? That was the best day of my life. You know, it, it's uh, amazing. It's amazing. I, the feeling, right? It, the, it's incredible. So I know exactly yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. And then, and then I, you know, and, and then you sing one of those songs and the goosebumps goes up the arm yeah. and, and there's this, uh, happiness that, uh, that encompasses your whole face <laughs> and it's just, it's wow. Been, it's just you sheer know? joy. Uh, it's it's sheer joy. Yes. And I mean, you know, you know, that, uh, uh, that song, I've got you under my skin. How boring it was until Sinatra uh, <laughs> Sinatra it up because originally it was. If you, I don't know if you know this. I, I'm not familiar with the original. It was. Are you ready for this? This is the way um, uh, he sung it. Cole Porter sung it. All right, you ready? Yeah. I've got you <laughs> under my skin, <laughs> and this, and I heard it. And if you if you go on the internet and you get Cole Porter singing "I've Got You Under My Skin," I think you I will hear been. this, and you'll <laughs> say, "I can't believe that's the same song." And the person who told me that was Carrie Hoffman because he used to do this like history of Sinatra oh. Oh. and how Cole Porter was not a happy camper when he heard Sinatra do it, but the residual checks said it all. But that, I mean, that, that was that the, that, that, <laughs> that, uh, yeah. now let me ask you, did you ever meet um, Frank Sinatra? I, I came as I, I was within about eight feet of him. Um, what happened was uh, there was a, uh, he had a golf a charity golf tournament in Palm Springs um, for years. And one year I got invited when he was still alive. So I was very excited. And um, so, you know, I, I attended some of the events and the, obviously the golf and at the events, you know, I was just a, in the audience, but sure. then they had, but they had an after party for all the celebrities that had been invited to the event. So I went to the after party and I walk in, you know, they have a tent set up somewhere. I walk in, there's a bar set up and I go to the bar to get a drink. I look over and there's Frank with his wife, Barbara, and somebody else talking literally seven feet away, you know, just right. standing right there. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, like, and, and I wanted to talk to him, but I didn't have the nerve to intrude on his space or whatever, you know? Right. So I just kind of sat there, you know, sneaking in looks whenever I could just to take it in. It was, it was, you know, it was, it was pretty cool. It was cool just to be that close and to almost be able to hear him talk. And, you know, it was oh, pretty cool. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, you know what we got to do? Um, if we're, if you're ever in Las Vegas, when I'm there, uh, my friend Willie Rizzo, who is Jilly's son. Oh, um, I'll introduce you because you know he was all excited that you were going to come on. Oh, great! He can, get, he can tell you some great Frank Sinatra Jilly stories. Oh, I bet. Uh, I bet. So, and uh, he generally comes into New York, and we have these dinner parties. And I'll get you. I'll get you the ticket to the party. That would so, be awesome, you know, and uh, he would love to. He would love to have you. And oh, that'd be that'd be great. And, and you know, Jilly is one of is you know an old time guy, even though he's our age. And um, he was born in February. I was born in June fifty one. He'll kill me for telling you this. And we're very, we've become very dear friends. And you know these these old timer types. They they don't tell you everything. They just like the mm -hmm. little hints. Right. They they just tease you a little. Tease you a little bit, right. you know. And uh it's just uh he has really become a dear friend of mine and I'm going to be uh uh I hope I'm not letting uh, tales out of school here but I'm going to be moving out to Arizona for half the year. So oh. when that happens, I'll be able to get out to see all my friends yeah. on the West Coast and you'll be able to visit me in yeah. Arizona and we can and uh, Vegas, have some and, fun. We yeah, can have some fun. 
and you'll be closer to Vegas too. Yeah, well, and we'll be closer to Vegas. And yeah. I have, uh, you know, I have a lot of singer friends. Another friend of mine is George Bugatti, who does Sinatra. Okay. So, and I think I mentioned you to him and he to you and that there might be something going on. So that, that's another story. Oh, okay. There's a lot of, yeah. there's a lot of good stuff that, that, that's Could happened happen. there. Cool. So, uh, cool. so what are you, what are you doing these days now? You're, you're telling me you're doing, uh, you're, you're directing a big, uh, uh, a big movie might be coming down the pike. Is there anything that you want to uh, talk about uh, that you, you, you mentioned to uh, uh, movies already on uh, Netflix or was it on uh, Amazon? Amazon Prime. Yeah. yeah. Amazon Prime. Go ahead. Yeah. So Amazon Prime was, yeah, those two movies are out now. Man's Best Friend and Lost Heart just got released. Um, I just did a short. I actually went to Philadelphia about a week ago to shoot it. Um, it's an interesting little short. Um, I, it's called When George Got Murdered. Wow. And, um, you know, uh, this uh, black filmmaker, uh, Terrence Tykeem, contacted me. He's he's done two films, and he was doing this short. He wrote it, obviously having to do with um, uh, the George Floyd de incident. And so okay. I thought I thought it would be – it was a very interesting concept, and I decided I wanted to do it. So we just shot that. I don't know when that's coming out. And then um, I'm waiting – to hear, I just got, you know, I just got an offer to do a film that would be shooting in New York. So um, I, I can't talk about what it is. I just got the script and um, it looks pretty good. So we'll see. I might be there in the spring shooting, doing a film. And um, and then I'm also supposed to go to, um, I was supposed to go to Prague to do a film. Wow. <laughs> so wow. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that, that that got held up because of COVID. So we'll see. And then i um, the one that I will be directing, um, I, 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 I'm not going to say what it is, but it's, it's, a, it's a romantic comedy, very high concept, though. Um, and it deals, and it will be shot in Vegas, and it deals with poker, <laughs> but in a very different way. Um, sort wow. of, an, it's a fairy tale updated with poker. It's very different. So um, hopefully, we'll be, I'll be shooting that and directing that. Um, maybe in the spring as well. Well, that's great because I'm going to be out there in uh, Arizona in the spring. So you oh, tell yeah. me when you're going to be in, um, in Las Vegas and yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll meet. I'll bring Monica along and uh, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll plan um, uh, a dinner party at the uh, bootlegger. And oh, okay. uh, yeah, and we'll, 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 we'll have, we'll have some fun. My posse, uh, my posse is your posse. You know? <laughs> Sounds good. Now, so, uh, the, the, other, oh, the other thing I, sh I should mention is that I was also in the middle of doing, I have a CD out called D most mostly swinging. Um, but with a great big band, all these great musicians, um, jazz guys in LA, but um, I was in the middle of doing a second CD in Nashville, we were recording it. Um, also standards uh, jazz, but not the a little bit more contemporary jazz, not the big band sound, but a contemporary jazz setting. Mixed in with some 60s and 70s songs, which are really cool. I love it. Uh, but then we got hung up because of the COVID. So um, we're hoping to finish that in the spring uh, in, in Nashville. So yeah. that's, that, that's the other thing going on. Yeah. Now, were you able to, um, in your uh, in your heyday, uh, do the talk show circuit? And uh, who was the a uh, late night uh, talk show host that um, that uh, you met and you felt uh, the most connection with? Well, I didn't do this. I mean, I would have loved to, have, you know, I used to watch Johnny Carson religiously. You know, I was, a right. when I was young, I, every night I'd watch Johnny. Me too. Uh, yeah. Just every night. Um, and I never got to do his show, which was disappointing. They, um, the only ones I did, uh, let's see. I, well, I did Merv Griffin a couple of times and he, he, he was very, he, he was very nice. Super oh yeah. 
Oh yeah, wonderful. Super, man. super nice guy. And I'd done Mike Douglas show a couple of times, and he was he was always very nice as well. Yeah. Um, I did, and then I did Dinah. Uh, Dinah Shore had her show. Oh yes, Dinah Shore. Yeah. In the so, USA, in your Chevrolet. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was cool to do to yeah. be with Dinah. She was yeah. great. She was. Those are I. I might have done somebody else, but those are the three that I remember, and they were. I always I had great experiences on all three. Well, the one that I, well, I love Johnny Carson. I, yeah. I had so many dreams because I used to go to bed watching the Johnny Carson show. Me too. I, you know, yeah. and uh, the one, and I I wanted, I want to meet him one day, Dick Cabot. Oh, Dick right. Cabot, Dick. When I was in uh, uh, an undergraduate was the man. I mean, he was. Yeah. He was more sophisticated than Carson. Yeah. He was the intellectual. He went to Yale. Right. He was the gymnast. And it was, and I really want to meet this guy. Uh, someday I, I, I yeah. would love to meet him. And uh, yeah, I never got to meet Dick as well. Yeah. He, he is somebody um, that really, um, you stood know, stood out to you. Stood out. Yeah. And um, uh, the, uh, I, I, I remember there was this uh, uh, comedian. I, o I always block on his name. Uh, he's the, he's the, um, uh, the comedian from Canada. He's a short guy. Sm a short. Short. Oh, oh, Martin Short. Martin Short. And I, I Martin Short makes me laugh. I love yeah. Martin Short. Very funny. Very, very funny guy. Him yeah. and Dana Carvey. I, yeah. I, I, I yeah. They're great. Uh, two people I want to meet, but yeah. he relates of being, you're, you're going to go crazy on this, going to a Johnny Carson Malibu party. Oh, yeah? And at the party, you got Frank Sinatra at one part of the room. You have um, Bob Hope in another part. Wow. It was it was like <laughs> celebrities on steroids. Right, right. And and I mean, I don't know what I would have done. Well, I was a, a very insecure uh, 20 year old. I don't know what I would have done, but it, it just I, I I'll never forget that. And the way he related the story he's so he's such a a, a wonderful yeah. talent yeah yeah so definitely. uh definitely. Yeah, anyway. i've never met them i've never met them yeah at, yeah yet. yeah yeah and who would you say the one person the one bigger than life personality uh i mean you mentioned frank sinatra who would yeah. you say you were most impressed with that the, you that, that, I, that i did get to meet that you did get to meet yes well I guess the guy that I'd have to bring up because see, when I really started getting into acting after that summer that when I was in the Catskills um, and I got really into, into focused on, on acting. And, and then I became, you know, I was watching, I loved movies. And in the late sixties, there was, it was a great, a, a great um, proliferation of, of wonderful films. Sure. Um, it was almost like independent. The studios were making like independent films. And I, the guy who became my favorite after I saw the first movie I saw him in was the movie five easy pieces. Oh he, yeah. Jack Nicholson. Nicholson. Oh, I, I was, I was 17 wow. when I saw uh, five easy pieces and, you know, and I, and I loved, I mean, I loved Paul back then, all the great actors, you know, there's Paul Newman and Dustin Hoffman and, uh, so many, but Nicholson, well, I saw him in five easy pieces. And then shortly after that, an easy rider. Uh, and then of course, Chinatown later on, but there was the right. last de the last detail oh. and ca carnal knowledge. And um, so I was a huge Nicholson uh, fanatic and I got to, what happened was they were shooting Chinatown at Paramount studios yeah, and yeah. we were shooting happy days at Paramount studios so I saw somehow I saw the call sheet and it's that they were shooting there and with Roman Polanski directing and, and oh. Nicholson and, and it says stage, whatever the stage number was, it says close set. 
So now I'm wearing, it's that's supposed to take place, Chinatown took place in the 30s. I'm in my costume for whatever we were shooting, so I'm in 50s outfit. But it looks kind of, it's still period, and it looks similar. So I just go over to the soundstage, and I know it's a closed set, but I open the door, I walk in, I'm in wardrobe, and I just walk in, and people are looking at me a little bit, but they figure I belong there, you know? So I'm walking around and all of a sudden I see where the set is and I look and I see the lights and I could see Nicholson in there in his <laughs> in his white, whatever suit he was wearing and the hat and it's Roman Polanski. And I'm like, my jaw is on the floor. And then I'm just, I, I can't even move. I'm just standing there for 10 minutes. And then the scene end, they just, they're done. I think they were rehearsing. And then Jack starts walking and he's walking in my direction, and he sees me. And I, I don't know whether it's because he he's so aware of who belongs there or not. And but he kind of looks at me, and but then he walks by, and I figure, okay, that's it. That's that was cool as hell. And then I start wandering around the back of the soundstage and walking around. And then all of a sudden, the door opens up, and Jack comes out, and he looks at me, and I can't talk. And he says, you know, hello, how you doing? And and I go, oh, Jack, you know, I, I'm such a fan. You know, I was like, I, I was uh, crazy. And he, he comes over and he starts talking to me, you know, and, and I start telling him about all the scenes in the movies that I loved. And, and he's telling me stuff about it. And, and, and then he starts talking about acting with me. I talked to him for like 20 minutes. Oh, oh I, I was, it was, I was more thrilled about that than, then probably even when I got to meet Mickey Mantle years later, which oh, that would have thrilled. Oh, I got to meet the man. Mick. You just gave me goosebumps to hear <laughs> what a wonder. This uh, incident that you brought up, I think was the highlight of the interview because it really, he didn't disappoint. I mean, he was your idol and he yeah. responded to you. And uh, yeah. What, yeah, what it was, it was, yeah, uh, what does awesome. Mantle say to you? Well, Mickey was in the middle of a, he was in the middle of a signing. You know, it was at one of these autograph type uh, situations. It was a trade show, sporting goods, and he was set up and had lines of people waiting. But then somebody that was kind of working with him brought recognized me and said, "Oh, you want to meet Mickey?" I said, "Yeah." And yeah. They brought, and they they brought me over to him and. And he was in the middle of signing stuff, but, but, and I think this was during the time when he was drinking pretty good. And, but, but, so he didn't talk much, but he was very, you know, he, he recognized me and he was very happy to say hello. And, 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 and um, he didn't, I didn't even ask him to sign anything, but I took a picture with him and I have the picture. Oh, that's great. That's yeah. Great. Yeah. Well, well. I just want to thank you for a wonderful hour. I told you it was going to go fast. Yeah, you were right. It was it was it was great great talking with you and sharing all this. Uh, I I feel the same way, and I'm just so happy that uh, you and I are friends. And, yes, uh, I look forward to uh, many years. And as Sinatra would say, the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, well I'll see you out here, Vegas, Arizona. We'll okay. make it happen. We're going to make it happen. Thanks again. All right. Don Most from Happy Days. And, oh, thank you. and thank John. a great musical talent. Uh, thank you, John. Thank you so much. much. My pleasure. Bye-bye. Right. Take, Take care. Thank you, Don Most. Where are That was great. I, what did you think, guys? Wasn't that a good interview?